Showing up as an investor for the last 30 years, consulting for as many years, coaching businesses for the last 15 years. I've been, uh, I even started a mentoring program five years ago to be able to connect with leaders, trusted advisors, uh, people that I can uh, certainly discuss doing business or referring business or joint ventures. And uh, I currently have a 21 day challenge each first 21 days of the month. It's a million dollar business challenge. We had one today and the opportunity is to bring in leaders that can think bigger and be able to meet other people and be able to discuss what their journey is and what their opportunity challenges or interests might be that we can participate or provide support or some service or financing investments. So about the preferred future and preferred past and uh, and so the quadrant was very helpful to be able to stay focused, to be able to keep going towards the preferred future, even though the client may have a tendency to be in the past. And uh, that dialogue is very interesting and also very visual to be able to bring some clarity as we discuss that with other people, not just clients, could be other people as well. You're right. The, the present is something that we're in the now. And the key is, of course, to be able to help the client go forward. Uh, the present is one of those things I think that we're taught as coaches to be able to find out where they're at now and where they're heading. And I do ask those questions uh, more so than the past. The past is not as important to me unless they bring it up, but it's not that important. It's more important where they're at now and where are they heading. And where are you heading now in the next 8 to 12 to 18 months? What does that look like? And then come back to the present. So where are you at now? in terms, um, and I focus on business. So in terms of business, where are you at now? What does that look like? So I know their future, I know their present, and then I want to know what is the gap between the present and the future? What needs to be done? What are you doing now? What would you like to do? And what would it mean to be able to achieve the future and that has a clear way for me to ask a client their path, their direction, and their motivation to get to the future. The way to empower someone is to be able to recall real powerful moments in the past to be able to incorporate that going to the future. So in that sense, the preferred past is very powerful to doing that. That's usually when someone is stuck when they they feel that uh, they don't have the capabilities, uh, there's something holding back. So bringing them into an empowering future or empowering past to, to go to an empowering future would be useful later in the conversation. And uncovering the motivation, the motivation to get that. And the motivation has a lot to do to meaning what would it mean to you to be able to get to that how will your life change what would happen what is the story in the future in terms of what would you tell yourself tell others and what would others say about you and or your business because sometimes they're the two different things could be the same thing so that's the direction where we want to take them elegantly and my experience has been, Oksana, if they're very clear about the motivation, if they're excited about the motivation, it would mean a lot, it would mean this. And specifically, I don't want fluff. Fluff doesn't do much great or nice or wonderful. That's fluff. But if it says, oh, I'll be able to make $2 million or I'll be able to hire 100 people or I'll be able to get 40 more clients, specifics, everything happens in specificity 
then I know the motivation is higher to be able to guide the client elegantly towards a perfect future beyond the preferred future. A preferred future means that the client prefers it. What they want. My contention is that there's two things, a future that they want and a future that they need. And they don't know what they don't know. And unless we probe into it a little bit more, and I'm starting to understand that what they don't know is that they can have an even exponential future rather than a linear future. Because what they're saying is based on their experience. Um, and it's usually, well, I want more money. I want more clients. I want more um, short term perspective, not long term simply because of a lot of pressures. It's a lot easier to think in 18 months or 12 months. It's a lot easier to think, oh, well, I'll make $2 million. I'll hire 100 people. I'll get uh, 20 to 40 more clients. It's, it's easier to visualize. And that's very linear. And that's what they ask for. And what they really need is to go exponential. So that instead of short term, it's exponential, maybe within that time frame, but is exponential towards an even much better future. And that is, I think, where she didn't go into that, didn't explain that. And, it, and I think that's where we need to be as coaches. We need to be able to uncover the possibilities of what they really need. How do they, how do we get to exponential? And that's something from other speakers, if you've been following and listening, that there is a linear path and then there's exponential. And what is this? What is this exponential? And of course, if we know about it, why don't we all do exponential? Because it's going to be the same amount of time, maybe more work, maybe a little more effort, but the results are tremendous. And so what is that mystery? How do we get to exponential in an environment that's very turbulent, that's uncertain? It's the VUCA effect. We don't know what we don't know. So how can we get even better exponentially when we have these uncertainty all around us? And how do we do that continuously? And I'm starting to uncover what that means. And what that means is to be able to stack powerful flow states, powerful skills where they can build up on it, continuous growth. There's a term called can I? C-A-N-I, continuous and never-ending improvement. And I think it's a Japanese term. And that makes sense to me. Can we do that? In spite of all the uncertainty, in spite of all the volatility, can we continue doing that? I don't fully know the answer, but let's assume that we can at least mitigate or address that uncertainty, that volatility that's going on, because we're able to take the right efforts, the, the right signals, the right way to show up exponentially. And uh, I'm reading the book. It's called Provoke. And uh, also they wrote the book Detonate. I haven't read that, but Provoke is interesting. And those are authors that presented prior to this. And that's, that's, their, that's their point. We are in a world that has dramatically shifted from just 10 years ago, more or less, from a world where businesses were, had an 80-20 rule, 80% with their existing business, 
producing and 20% developing new ideas, R&D, research and development, to now 50-50. 50% that they're focusing in their existing business and 50% that they're developing their replacement, their research and development, that they're expanding. That's significant. That means that now you can accelerate the exponential factor. And uh, so that's an intriguing notion. I like it. I think it's very innovative. I think the world is ready for more innovation. It's demanding faster delivery, faster products with uh, a cheaper cost and cutting down on the supply chain and for the talent to show up. And I think a big factor has to do with technology accelerating. The pandemic, I think, accelerated that. Also, the awareness that companies have a certain life cycle. They go up and they go down. An example is Meta, Facebook, which they have lost, from what I read, $60 billion. And I don't know the time frame, but they stepped into the, the Meta about a year ago. That's a lot of money for any company. They're no longer a trillion dollar company they're trying to figure this out. They stepped into investing in what they think is the future. Well, the present is not treating it very nicely. <laughs> so it's a gamble. We don't know. But I think that that's probably representative of what companies should be doing. They have the monies. They took a gamble. They're going in that direction. The key there is that it may be a 10 year projection and the world wants it in two years or in a year or three years. So there's a difference in the time frame, And so we may ignore them. And in the meantime, competition like Apple and Google may step in and, and have a different view of what that world should look like. So it's very interesting, but uh, certainly for us as coaches, it's important to be aware that there's a shift going on. There's a change. There's an acceleration going on and that we should be a part of it. We should know what where it's heading. We should be able to help support it. And we should also be able to develop our skills to address it. What is the framework? What is the new world that we stepped in? Because, quite frankly, in order to accelerate that, it involves better communications, collaboration, uh, listening, uh, involvement, participation, diversity, all of those things. And I started to list what I call signals. Some people call, well, some people call them triggers triggers to get into a better state. Signals, signals is a nicer word for me. Uh, signals, so communications is a signal. Focus is a signal. Um, collaboration is a signal. Here's what I'm starting to un understand. We know these things from coaching. It's not you, we've known this. So, so what's the big deal? Here's the big deal. The big deal is the recipe. Which signals do we need at the right time for the right person, for the right situation, and the right acceptance? That seems to be, that seems to be the magic formula. So now we know the signals. We know that already. We know the clients that they are in a linear fashion. We want to get them exponential. So how do we do that? Well, as we stack those signals, the correct signals to get them to where they want to go. And that is the art as a coach. Well, which signals? Do we use communications, collaboration, listening, focus, 
do we use what she has in terms of uh, elegant dialogic orientation? Uh, so what do we use? That is the art of the coach, the new coach, to be able to help a client get exponentially going. We already know the skills and the key there is having the right communications with the client to uncover the preferred future, what they want a preferred future. And it's always going to be shorter term. But if we lay the groundwork, it's going to be extended future, even longer. And that might be the exponential part. Coaching is the solution. The solution for being able to uncover better futures with people and focusing in this direction because we're focused on flow states and flow state is is a word where everything goes right it's a combination of the skills and the challenges so if you have the skills that match the challenges perfectly then you're in kind of in a flow state until the challenges get too challenging. Then either you lower the challenges or increase the skills. Very simple.